Hello and welcome back to the series on how to work with pandas in Python. Now in the last video we covered uh, different ways you could filter out and group data. In this video we're going to talk more about grouping data using the group by meth function in pandas. And this is going to be chapter 8 in the textbook which can be found at pandas.pythonhumanities.com. So what we're going to be talking about is another way of kind of filtering out your data and kind of working with it and grouping it with the group by function. Let's go ahead and just jump right in because I think the best way to understand this function is to see it in action. So let's go ahead and type in df, which is going to be calling our data frame, which we've already created here. Let me go ahead and make this a little easier to read by knocking that out of the way and zooming down. And this is our typical Titanic data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the group by function. And this is going to take one key, one argument right here. And this is going to be a string that's going to correspond to the, the column that you want to group the data by. So in this case, we're going to have it be uh, the df.groupbySex. So we're going to try to group the data into male and female. We, so this is a binary uh, data set when it comes to, to gender. So what we need to do now is look at this output. And what we see here is a group by object in and Python from the pandas library. But what this group by object allows us to do is to create new data frames with a filter kind of in place. So let's see what it looks like with that filter applied. So let's again group the data now by sex. So we have this data frame grouped as we want it. And now we're going to do dot get underscore group. And we're going to just grab one subset of our data. In this case, our male category. And I know what you're probably thinking, this seems an awful lot like our filter category. And in fact, it, it, it kind of is. This is another way of doing kind of the same thing. And like I said, there's really niche scenarios in which you want to use one over the other. That's kind of beyond the scope of this video. But let's look at some other ways we can kind of do this with some numerical data. In other words, some non-string data. Let's group our data by age, which is going to be numerical. And we're going to get group that is equal to 20. So the individuals who have an age that is equal to 20. And we see the output here. We only have a handful of them, and they're all outputted from the entire data set. So this allows us to very quickly kind of get a, a quick sense of, of the data at hand. So this group by function is also really good for performing some quantitative analysis using the count and sum functions. So let's again go back to df.group by, and we're going to group by sex once again. And now we're going to do dot count. And you can get some really quick quantitative information about your data. Now, because we're working with uh, data that is going to be binary, so just male and female, which is how this data set is, um, we're going to get some quick quantitative counts for these individuals. And we're going to notice across the board, this is going to be really close to being uh, across the board being uh, 314 and 577, because that's the, the number of individuals here. So that's what we're kind of seeing there. But when this is really useful is if you're dealing with some kind of numerical data that you need to perform some other kind of calculations on. Like maybe you want to count up the sum. Maybe you're interested in the quantity of fare paid by uh, male versus female in the data set. So we could do something like this. We could say df.group by sex once again. But rather than count, we're going to do dot sum. And what this lets us do is work with the numerical data. Notice how we're only working with the numerical data now because that's the only thing that you can sum up is numerical data. Now, some things are kind of odd and wouldn't necessarily be useful adding up all the ages. I can't think of a scenario where a kind of question would be posed if we added up all the sums of the ages on the Titanic where that would be handy. Um, but where this would be handy is in a place where summing up data is useful. So if you wanted to calculate the total sum paid and fair by each gender, you can do that by using the sum function. And so we can see here we've got uh, the quantity is around 13,900 for a female and around 14,700 and fair for uh, for males. So that's a quick way to kind of get a, a sum of a very important piece of data that should be summed up. There's other ones like passenger IDs that don't make sense, but for the ones that do, this is a really quick way to get some pretty good quantitative and uh, information. And we can also do some more advanced things and narrow out only the useful column. So let's see what that might look like. We're going to say df.group by, and again, we're going to go with sex. 
But here we're going to add something different. We're going to say dot fair. And this is going to grab just this fair column right here. And then we're going to do dot sum. And now we've grabbed just the quantitative data that's actually relevant to us. So that's one way that we can kind of work with uh, quantitative data using the group by method and doing some good and quick calculations on them. But the group by method also allows us to work with multiple columns simultaneously. So let's say we were interested in grouping things not just by sex, but by maybe sex and passenger class. So let's go ahead and then do that. So we can say df.groupby. And here we're going to pass in a list this time, not a string, a list. We're going to group first by sex and then by p class. And then let's go ahead and see what their sums look like individually. So if we execute this command, we're going to just look again at the fair column, and we can now see everything broken down, how that fair divides up among different classes. And as you would expect, first class is going to have the largest number for both male and female. And then it's going to be followed by uh, second class, or sorry, actually followed by third class, and then um, and then second class in the case of female, and vice versa for, for male. So that's a way that you can actually use the group by method and group multiple categories simultaneously. But we can also do something cool. We, can, we could group if we wanted to. There was a reason for it. We could group also age into this. And if we do that, we can see how this number breaks down by individual age groups. So what we're actually doing is seeing that for uh, all the individuals who were in first class and 14 years old, their total fare came out to 120 uh, US dollars. I think it's in US dollars. It might be in pounds. Either way, you can see the 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 way you can kind of start viewing this this data in, in much more dynamic and much more deep ways relatively quickly and with just one line of code. You may, however, see part of the problem already, and that's that you can't actually get a good sense of how much data there is because it's not all being displayed. One of the things that we can do is we can do pd.setoptions, and this allows us to kind of change the way in which the data is displayed. In this case, we're going to play with the display max, nope, sorry, display dot max underscore rows, and then we're going to specify how many rows we want to show. In this case, let's just show a thousand, and then we're going to do the exact same command that we did above and execute it. And it looks like I have set option, not options. That's my fault. And now we're able to see all the data broken down now by class, by age. And so we get the individual fair sums for all of these different categories. So this is a very powerful way to really kind of explore your data using the group by method for a, a large kind of breakdown of different, uh, of different things. So like I said, the group by method does some things that are similar to the filter function, but it does some things a little differently. And really the utility of it is how you want to work with the data, how you want to change the data. You're going to find times when you want to use the filter versus the group by and vice versa. I, I kind of switch between them interchangeably without really thinking about it, but you really should be familiar with both of these because like I said, there will be times when you want to use one over the other. That's going to be it for this video. As always, thank you so much to all of my Patreon support and those who have joined this YouTube channel. I produce all this content free for everyone. If you get a lot out of this channel and you want to support it, please do consider supporting it via Patreon or clicking the join button down below where you can kind of join up and become a member on the actual channel.